In this presentation, we will have a brief overview of various data collection methods for a quantitative research study. First of all, what do we collect as data? In quantitative research, what the researcher is interested in is variability, i.e. something that takes different values. So data collection is basically gathering information on the things that vary across subjects or over time. Variability comes from three sources, and what we want to capture as the focus of the study is the systematic variance. Let's say we want to explain the relationship between student learning outcomes and faculty mentoring. That means we want to see if student learning outcomes have variations according to the variations in faculty mentoring. The actual changes in these two variables, our dependent or outcome and independent or manipulated variables, are the systematic variations that we are interested in and should be the main factors that we collect data on. Yet, we want to also consider other systematic factors that are also related to the variations in the study variables. For example, a student's academic major might influence both student learning outcomes and faculty mentoring. Therefore, you can collect this information in your data so you can account for this factor later in your analysis. These are often referred as control variables. Finally, we have to acknowledge that the data we collect will include some error. For example, even if we collect data on student learning outcomes, the data might not perfectly represent the level of student learning for our population because the sample we collect data from might be different from population or the survey or test we use might not be a good measurement to evaluate student learning outcomes. Or it might be the football season, the student partied so hard the night before they take the test, thus the score was lower than their actual ability. This can introduce a random error to our data. Apparently, we cannot measure the error but reducing it by considering potential sources of errors is really important. So now that we know that we will decide what to collect data on based on our research topic, problem, and question, how do we collect data? Here are some examples of data sources that are often used in educational and social science research. I also want to point that you can use these data sources for both quantitative and qualitative research. Using the same source, you can generate a data for a quantitative study if you focus on variability and document the values in a numerical format. On the other hand, you will convert the same source to a qualitative data if you focus on words and terms, images, and individual observations. You can collect data on knowledge, aptitude, intelligence, and etc. using tests. If you want to gather information on self-reported perception, experience, attitude, and etc., you will use questionnaires. Another unique way of collecting data is to use visual data or documents. For example, in my study of tuition policy at public universities in Texas, Myself and my co-author collected tuition and fee data for the years of 2000 through 2011 using each university's course catalog. In another study that examined personal network and research collaboration, I gathered information from a department's faculty directory page to gather the list of the faculty and their graduated institutions. Also, you can use secondary data that is already existing. The data might have been collected by other organizations or individuals for different purposes. For example, if you wanted to study the relationship between the use of Blackboard and academic progress at ASU, you can request access to the administrative data from the university. You probably sense this from what I just said, but sometimes Getting access to data, especially with personal information, 
can be a long and complicated process with the security issues. Finally, interview, focus groups, and observations are often used for qualitative studies. But again, you can use these sources to collect quantitative data as well. You can conduct an interview and gather data by asking questions to your subjects. You can use a focus group method and gather information by leading a group discussion or through observations on your subjects. More details of these methods will be discussed later week when I explain qualitative data collection. Again, your data in a quantitative research setting captures variability of something. The variable should contain the information that we want to know in a numerical format. Operationalizing the conceptual definition of a variable is possible through measurements. Here is an example from the National Survey of Student Engagement, which is a well-known survey study for students' college experiences. One of the concepts that the survey tries to collect data on is higher order learning. Conceptually or theoretically, the definition of this term is cognitively intense learning that requires much more academic effort and application than simply memorizing facts. The researchers wanted to collect data on institutional practice on higher order learning and employed a number of measures to capture it. The measurements are asking during the current school year, how much has students' coursework emphasized memorizing course material, applying facts, theories or methods to practical problems or new situations and so on. The other thing to look at is that the measurements consist of a four level scale that ranges from very little to very much. This means that each of the measurements will be turned into a variable that has full values before the researchers start doing the data analysis. But measurements can take different values depending on the levels of measurement. First, in nominal measurement, the values refer to simply the name of the attributes. For example, academic major. You can code liberal arts as one, education as two, Use value of 3 to refer to engineering. You can use 0 for female and 1 for male, but it is arbitrary choice. So you can choose to use 1 for female and 2 for male. In ordinary measurement, the values present hierarchical order or rank and the distance between the levels is not the same. An example of ordinary measurement will be the level of education. We can give the categories no education and elementary school 0 and 1 respectively and assign PhD the highest value. However, we cannot assume that the difference between no education and elementary school level and the gap between a master's degree and PhD degree are the same. Interval and ratio measurements are often called a continuous variable. They capture a continuing ordinary values and the distance between values, i.e. changes from 1 to 2 and 3 to 4, is the same. The nature that distinguishes interval and ratio measures is that in interval measurement, the zero point is arbitrary and not meaningful. Temperature and SAT score are the examples of interval measure. One degree or point increase in temperature or SAT score means the same thing at any data points. However, zero degree does not mean that temperature doesn't exist. Similarly, zero point in the test score doesn't mean that the test taker doesn't have any knowledge. Meanwhile, ratio variable contains a meaningful zero. For example, zero dollar of income means no income. Knowing your levels of measurement is important for interpreting data and choice of statistical analysis you will employ. We will discuss this further in the next week's materials. Let's look at how measures of different levels are employed in a questionnaire. The first question is asking how the respondent would evaluate their entire educational experience at the respective institution. And the options take four values, 
that range from poor to excellent. What level of measurement is employed here? Yes, it is capturing the satisfaction in a hierarchical order, therefore on ordinary measurement. How about the following one that asks year of birth? The answered values will be in year, which takes continuous values, and increase in every year means same every one year. However, zero year doesn't mean that the word or time do not exist. Therefore, it is on interval measure. So what if the question asks students to write their age instead? What level of measurement was employed in that case? Yes, age is a ratio measure because zero in age has meaning. Last question asks respondents to choose a residential condition during college that applies to them. What level of measurement is this question using? Yes, it is a nominal measurement because each value presents a category or a name. Before we conclude this presentation, I want to draw your attention to the issue of measurement error. Again, we use measurement to capture the trait that we want to understand and it is not perfect. Mainly, there are random error and systematic error. Random error is factors that randomly affect people's responses such as individual's mood. This error is less serious and often considered as noise because this error occurs only for some people in your sample and is cancelled out among the people within the sample. So it doesn't change the average value that is measured from the group. However, systematic error is factors that affect the measurement of a variable for everyone in the sample. For example, let's say a word used in the question was sensitive and upsetting for your sample, everyone in your sample. Thus, the measured satisfaction score with the institution might be more negative than the true satisfaction level might have been. So this error introduces biases to the variable. To reduce measurement error, you can employ several tactics. When you use a questionnaire to collect data, you may want to pilot the questionnaire for a group of people from your sample or similar to your sample so you can detect any errors that can be caused by the questions and response options. You can also employ multiple measures of the same construct and triangulate the responses to better approximate the concept you want to measure. If you have multiple people who collect data and enter the data, you will need to make sure that you are all on the same page in terms of the data collection and data entering procedures. Okay, among the various data collection method, we will further discuss how to use questionnaires for data collection. See you in the next presentation.